Hi guys, and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, Jay, my husband and I, we have been traveling for just a little over a year and a half. We just got back from spending 76 days on an awesome venture in Peru. And I wanted to break down our total costs for those 76 days. So if you're watching this and planning a trip to Peru, I really hope you find this video helpful. So I've broken down our expenses into eight categories and they are accommodations, food, flights, transportation, phone plans, excursions, miscellaneous like pharmacy and shopping, and our fixed costs. I'm gonna start with one of our biggest expenses and that was accommodations. Was it our biggest expense? Nope, I'm gonna talk about that next. Even though we were in Peru for 76 days, I've said this in some of our other videos, I feel like we just scratched the surface. We spent the majority of our time in Cusco, but we did travel around to other areas. We did stay in Aguas Calientes. We stayed in Olente Tambo, Pisac. We stayed in Huacachina. So we did kind of explore the area a little bit. We mostly rented Airbnbs and stayed for the majority of the time through two Airbnbs. And then we would skip around spending times in hotels. We did spend a few nights in a hostel when we did the Salcante trek. I'm gonna leave that at the end of the video so you can go ahead and check out our epic fail doing the Salkante. The total for the whole 76 days for our accommodations was $1,608, which works out to about $21 a night, which isn't too bad, I thought. But for the most part, we did do, like I said, Airbnbs and hotels where we had a full kitchen, we had laundry, we had a separate bedroom. So we're living a little bit, not on the high end, but we weren't budget traveling either. Some of the smaller stays that we did uh, were better than others. <laughs> we always read the reviews and we like to know what the cleanliness rating is, how comfortable the bed is, if they offer hot showers, and obviously what the price is because we always like to try and stay on budget. I will say, if you're thinking about doing the Salkante trek and are contemplating whether or not to stay in Molapata the night before, the Till Cafe was awesome. We stayed there, it was $54 a night, and it came with breakfast, a hot shower, it didn't have heat, but more on that in a minute. If you only have a few nights to stay in Cusco and you want a good, inexpensive hotel, Fiesta Sun Hotel is definitely worth checking out. If you're a budget traveler especially, you get the most bang for your buck here. It was $15 a night. It came with a hot shower. It had a comfortable bed, came with breakfast. The staff are super nice. Definitely worth checking out if you're on a budget. One of the accommodations we stayed at that I probably wouldn't book again was Refugio Nacho. And I only say that because we went in the colder months and it didn't have heat. Everything else was great. It was at the base of Humanité Lake. So maybe if you went in the warmer months, it would be totally fine. Um, they had dormitories that you could choose from. They had private rooms. It was a communal area where you ate. Home cooked meals were delicious. The staff was excellent. And yeah, just a short jaunt to Humanité Lake was great. In the warmer months, probably better than the colder months. Even though they gave you a water bottle to sleep with that night, <laughs> I found it a little too cold for my liking. So with that being said, when you are looking for accommodations in Cusco when you're going in the colder months, just be aware that some of your accommodations may not come with heat. This is something that I wasn't aware of and I've spoke about it in our other videos, but make sure if you're planning to go in the colder months, make sure you have the option of having some type of heat source in your accommodations because it gets chilly at night. It dropped into the low 30s. There was a couple of nights, it was 29. It was chilly. I knew it was gonna be cold when we were in Peru. I just didn't realize it was gonna get that cold. <laughs> Moving on to the highest expense we had and that was food. This has been a consistent theme for Jay and I, and we spent $2,394 on food. We did cook some meals when we had our Airbnb and we stayed in for breakfast. I think one of our favorite meals that we had in Peru was the roasted chicken. It was found everywhere and it ranged from about 18 soles to 22 soles for like a quarter chicken dinner. So for those of you that are from Canada and know Swiss chalet, it's kind of like that, but way bigger portions and for a lot less money. One of the best meals we had was when we went to Olente Tombo. We had alpaca steak, I had a beef steak, it had roasted potatoes, fresh salad. It was the best meal and it tasted so organic, so fresh. It was awesome. I will leave the name of that restaurant in the description box below. One of the most expensive meals we had was that beef and beer and I had a T-bone steak with some side salads. 
um, like potato and just a leaf lettuce salad. It was very, very good. And for $27 back home, that meal easily would have been over $60. So you have polar opposites where you can go to the San Pedro market and get a big homemade bowl of soup for $3 or you can spend $27 on a T-bone steak dinner. Can't go wrong. I think that's one of the things that I loved about Peru was the variety of foods that they had. I mean, they still had your chain restaurants like McDonald's and Burger King if you're craving that as well. So definitely lots to choose from no matter what your dietary needs are. Now this next category will be different for everybody. And I find that when people do budget videos, they often leave this one out, probably because it will be different for everybody. But when you're going on a trip, you're gonna need flights. We were in Mexico when we flew to Peru, so our flight costs were 515 Canadian for two people to get to Peru. And then when we needed to fly home from Peru, those flights cost $780 Canadian for two people. On our way to Peru, we did end up missing our flights. I know, what? That was the first time that has ever happened to Jay and I. It cost us an additional $333 to rebook that flight. So that was kind of a hard pill to swallow. So in total, our Flight costs were $1,628. Flights to Peru were direct, so they were nice, but on our way home, we had two stops, which I didn't think was too bad. I honestly thought it was gonna be a long travel day, but it ended up being nice because we had about two or three hour layover in between each flight, so it was just enough time to get through immigration, get our bags to security, and just sit and chill, relax, and board the plane again. Number four is transportation and we mostly use taxis and buses to get in and around Cusco into neighboring cities. We found taxis very reasonable while we're in Peru. We use the Uber app and when we rented our Airbnb, we were about a 50 minute walk from our Airbnb to the main square in Cusco. And if we didn't feel like walking it that day, we would just order a taxi on the Uber app and it was around $4. So very, very reasonable for taxis. Our total transportation cost was $610. We also used overnight buses to get to and from the bigger areas like from Cusco to Arequipa or from Lima to Cusco and back. I gotta say that I'm not a big fan of overnight buses and it's probably because the terrain in Peru was so hilly, the roads were so bumpy and windy that there was no way that you were gonna get a restful sleep <laughs> on the bus. And if you got motion sick, or even if you didn't, you were definitely ready to get off the bus by the time it was over. One of the bus lines we used was called Cruz del Sur. I would totally recommend them. We booked it online, it was very easy. There was another bus line that we used that I wouldn't recommend and that was called Jean Bus. We used that bus from Cusco to Arequipa and the windows froze on the inside. There was frost in the inside of the bus the whole way there and I was triple layered and I was still freezing. It was that cold. So I definitely wouldn't recommend that bus. Number five is phone plans. We ended up using a company called Claro while we were in Peru. It was very reasonable. I think it worked out to about $10 for 30 days for one person. So in total, the 76 days cost us about $45, which I thought was excellent. And with that plan, you got 10 gig of data and unlimited social media. So it was perfect for what we needed and very easy. You just go into a Claro store, they have a chart, you pick what you want, you're in and out in no time. There are Claro stores everywhere in Peru. I think it's one of the bigger companies in Peru as well. Um, the service wasn't spectacular. It was good, but it wasn't like the best. Um, but for $10 for 30 days, it was perfect. The next category is excursions. And I feel like Jay and I did a lot of excursions when we were in Peru. We typically don't book tours. Um, we like to kind of just go off on our own, go off the beaten path and just kind of explore, take our time. But for what you got for the tours, I found it to be very reasonable. And the companies that we booked with made it super simple, super easy. So for 76 days, we spent $477 on excursions. And that didn't include Machu Picchu. I did a whole separate video on the costs of Machu Picchu. If you want to go check that out, I will leave that in the description box below. But for $477, we did seven excursions for two people. So 14 excursions in total. We did Pocoyo Rainbow Mountain, Austin Gate, Huacrupuquera, three bus tours, and the Sunset Dune Buggies in Huacachina. The tours that we did ranged from $11 Canadian per person to about $58 Canadian per person. And we hiked Cusco for free, hiked in Olentay Tombo for free. 
I feel like we saw a lot when we were in Peru. And I know, like I said earlier, I feel like we just scratched the surface. I also did a video on our top eight excursions that we did. If you wanted to know which ones were our top eight and why, go check that out after this one. Our category for miscellaneous includes shopping and pharmacy. I kind of threw that all in together. We spent $583 and 336 of that was for an eye doctor visit. Peru was kind of a switch in plans. We planned on staying in Mexico for six months but we ended up leaving early going to Peru. We ended up having to do a little bit of shopping, getting some trekking gear while we were in Peru. And we also bought altitude sickness pills, Sirochi pills, and some ibuprofen and allergy meds. The last category is our fixed costs. We have two things we pay for every month and that's our travel insurance and we carry a small Canadian cell phone plan. We use Safety Wing as our travel insurance and I will leave a link in the description box below for a discount if you're thinking about what's a good nomadic type travel insurance. All right, so if you were to add all eight categories together, we spend 8,072 Canadian for 76 days in Peru, which works out to about $106 per day, which I didn't think was too, too bad. Um, you could probably take off the one-offs like the doctor's appointment and the missed flights. That brought it down to about $97 a day. So we're kind of like in the middle. Can you do Peru on a much cheaper budget? Absolutely, but you can also spend a heck of a lot more. What's great about Peru is there are plenty of options to suit everybody and your comfort level. Well, there you have it, our total 76 day budget of Peru. If you found this video helpful, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're planning a trip to Peru, don't forget to check out our top eight adventures in the description box below. Or if you wanna see an epic fail, just click right here. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.